boy, making these videos is making me hungry. I had to have some of those uh, pretzels there. Uh, I've also got some tea here, so I'm ready to go. In this one, we're going to uh, talk about finding the empirical formula, EF, an abbreviation we've used before, based on being given percent compositions. Now, um, the that's going to be the page that's coming up. And so what I'd like to do is sort of reverse engineer what I'm talking about. I'm on this page going to start with an empirical formula, and I'm going to work towards percent compositions and show you how this goes. So, for example, if I just took C1H2O1 as an empirical formula, empirical formulas, remember, are the simplest formula possible. They are sometimes the same and sometimes different than the molecular formulas, which we'll also talk about. Now, um, so this is my empirical formula, and I'm going to turn this into percent composition. And to do that, I need to know that there's uh, percent by mass carbon, percent carbon. I'm going to need to know, well, I'm going to need to do the hydrogen and the oxygen, but let's just do carbon first. There is one carbon in this formula, so one carbon over C1H2O1. And the, you don't need the ones, but as placeholders and just to signify how many there are, I've left them times 100%. And um, I'm going to do grams here. So grams, one carbon, grams for the whole thing, which is going to equal 12.01 grams carbon for the one carbon. And 12 plus 2 times, actually do the 2 times first, 2 times 1.008. Uh, plus 12.01 plus 16 is 30.03 grams of C1H2O1 times 100%. 12.01, oops, 12.03. Times 100, I get 39.99 or 40.00. Well, let's do three sig figs. 40.0 percent carbon mass by mass. Um, now let's do percent hydrogen. And this time it's going to be 2 times 1.008, 2.02, let's say. 2.02 grams of hydrogen over still the same sample size, the whole molecule. Two point zero two divided by thirty point zero three times one hundred. I get six point seven three. Yep. Uh, percent hydrogen mass by mass. And now let's do percent oh, oxygen. There's one, so it's going to be 16.00. And uh, to be honest, the other way to do this is, since there's only three things, and the percents all will have to add up to 100%, we could do it that way as well. But I think we'll hopefully show that they all add up to 100 in the end. Sixteen divided by 30.03 times 100, 53.28, uh, or 53.3% uh, oxygen, mass by mass. And so I should be able to add all these up and get something very close to 100%. 53.3 plus 6.73 plus 6.73 
So I do get 100.03%. And that 0.03% is known as a rounding error, right? Because it has to add up to 100% when you add up all the parts of something. So, um, and any differences are because we didn't keep all the digits in our calculator, which is fine. And uh, at times when you work these types of problems, you will get numbers that are slightly off. They should be about this close though, so 0 0.03 um, to the correct answer, so that's fine. All right, so now if we have an empirical formula, we have now shown how we convert it into percent compositions. There's one other thing I want to say before we move on to solving some uh, more problems or some problems. So if something is 40.0% carbon, mass by mass, and I want to figure out how many grams there are, we can assume a 100 gram sample. Assume a 100 gram sample, in which case, if there's 100 grams and 40% are carbon, then that would mean that 40.0 grams of carbon per 100 grams of sample, and our sample in this case is our empirical formula, times 100%. And you can see that the hundreds cancel here, the times 100 divided by 100. And so what I'm gonna do, starting on the next page, is I'm gonna say, take the percent and turn them into grams using the same number. Totally legit, this is why. Because you assume a 100 gram sample of your, whatever you're trying to find, then the percents become grams. The percents become grams. And that is something that will be helpful to remember as you work over the next several pages. Let's jump to the next page now. And this is a typical empirical formula problem that um, a compound has, been, has the following elemental analysis. There are machines, chemistry machines, that give you elemental analysis uh, answers like this. It says uh, carbon percent, hydrogen percent, oxygen percent. Its molar mass is around 120 grams per mole. What is its empirical formula? That hopefully we can cover based on some things that we've just done. And I'll also talk about how to find the molecular formula. Now, um, so, and what I just said on uh, earlier in this video is that whatever the percent composition is, those are gonna be grams. So now we know we have 40.00 grams of carbon 6.69 grams of hydrogen, and 53.31 grams of oxygen. Okay? Um, and like I told you in one of my pro tips before, if you have grams and you know what it is, find moles. So what I'm going to start by doing down here is, so 40.00 grams of carbon, and I'm going to turn them into moles using the molar mass of carbon, 12.01. 12.01 grams of carbon is one mole of carbon. This is just the molar mass we've been talking so much about lately. And we're getting faster, even in my notes, I'm getting faster in using it. Whenever you need to know what the molar mass is, you've got your, for each element, you've got your periodic table nearby. And I'm going to convert that into moles. And if I do that, and this may seem familiar, 40 divided by 12.01 is 3.33 moles of carbon. Let's do the same thing for the 
grams of hydrogen, 1.008 from the periodic table, and we'll do the same thing for oxygen, 53.31, Sixteen for one mole of just plain O. Working these out, I get six point six nine divided by one point zero zero eight, six point six four, let's say. And our units of our moles of hydrogen there. Down here, 53.31 divided by 16, I get 3.33 as well. Okay, now this is not the empirical formula. The empirical formula has uh, small whole numbers in it. These are not whole numbers. The next step, so let's see this. Maybe I need to write this down. So in solving this problem, step one was to uh, turn uh, percent into grams, right? So the percents become grams. Step two, turn grams of each element into moles. Step three is going to be divide by the smallest number of moles. Because dividing by the smallest number of moles, number of moles, is going to help you find these small whole numbers that we're looking for for the empirical formula. So my smallest number amongst these three sets of moles is 3.33. So I'm dividing all of them by 3.33. And this is just 1, 6.64 divided by 3.33 is 1.99. And this is just going to be 1. Now, 1.99 is not a small whole number, but it is just a rounding error away from a whole number, which is 2. And now we have small whole numbers for our empirical formula. Our empirical formula is C1H2O1. And you can see that we ended up with these weird numbers, but it turns out that it's still just C1H2O1, similar to the previous page. And we do have our small rounding error. I mean, this could be down to 1.97, right, 0.03 off, or up to 2.03 and still be considered rounding and a rounding error away from a whole number two. Now, um, we, now, this is the empirical formula. Check. We have not done the molecular formula. And for the molecular formula, um, that's going to be step four, step four, to find molecular formula, find molar mass of empirical formula, and find ratio of molar masses, molecular formula divided by empirical formula. Let's do that before we step, fill in step five. And believe it or not, I'm going to need another piece of paper here. We're going into overtime again. So the molar mass here, C1H2O1, may be familiar, 12.01, plus 2, ah, I forgot my parentheses, 2 times 1.008, that's my hydrogen, plus 12.01, plus 16, I get 30.03 grams per mole, 
In the problem statement, it says that the molar mass is around 120 grams per mole. I'm going to find this ratio of molar masses. And that's going to be molecular formula over empirical formula equals 120 grams per mole over 30.03. And maybe you know what this ratio is going to be, but let's go ahead and do it on our calculators anyway. 120, back to the problem, 120 divided by 30.03. What? 120 divided by 30.03. There we go. 3.996, which is very close to 4. And that small whole number ratio means that the molecular formula is four times the empirical formula. So four times C1H2O1 is going to equal C4H8O4. And that is our molecular formula for this problem. We have our empirical formula, we have our molecular formula, and I guess Direction number five is multiply the formula, the empirical formula, times, well, uh, whatever this number is, mo uh, mm, uh, molecular formula over empirical formula to get molecular formula. Well, that seems like a decent outline of how to do this. Let's do some more and see if we can fit them on the correct pages. This one just asks, what is the uh, empirical formula? Same type of problem. Let's go ahead and tackle it. We've got 48.65% carbon, which we now know is 48.65 grams of carbon and we will turn it into moles. Same thing for our 8.11 grams of hydrogen and our 43.24 grams of oxygen. So we know that carbon is 12.01. Oop. We know that Hydrogen is 1.008, and we know that oxygen is 16 grams, 16.00. So again, our first step, turn our percents into grams. Second step, turn our grams for each element into moles. 48.65 divided by 12.01, we get 4.05 moles of carbon. 8.11 divided by 1.008, 8.05, let's say. And 43.24 divided by 16, 2.70. These are, well, two of them are actually pretty close to small whole numbers, but the third one is not. Uh, next step in the process is always to divide by the smallest number of moles, which in this case is the 2.70. Like so. Let's see what we get. 4.05 divided by 2.70. It's exactly 1.5. 8.05 divided by 2.70 is 2.98. And 1. Now, here's the 
uh, an additional wrinkle in empirical formula problems. What if there's an odd number in your empirical formula? The way that that shows up is as a 0.5 here. We cannot round this to two. It is way too far away. And that may not make sense yet, but hopefully we will see as we work problems why that is. This we can round the three, this is 1.5, and this is one. And so it turns out in this empirical formula, there is an odd number. To get rid of odd numbers, you have to multiply everything times two. And our empirical formula for this problem is C3H6O2. Now, how do you know when to do that? Remember, I said there are rounding errors in these problems of at most 0.03. Here we have a rounding error of 0.02, right? 2.98 to 3. If we were to say 1.5, is 1.53 or 1.47? No, it's not going to be close enough to any other whole number. That's, excuse me, that's how we know that uh, we need to multiply everything by two, that this is not something we round 1.5 to two. There's our final answer for our empirical formula. Let's power through another page or two for another type of empirical formula problem. This is called a hydrate problem. A mineral contains a hydrate of nickel two sulfate with an unknown number of waters of hydration. We talked about hydrates and waters of hydration in a previous lecture outline. And I give you the formula, nickel 2 sulfate dot x H2O, very typical for a hydrate. And I'm just going to write that down. Okay, and we don't know x. x is unknown. If a 0.4 gram sample of mineral and... 0 0.400 grams. The mineral is the whole thing, also called the hydrate. It is heated to constant weight over a Bunsen burner. Its mass decreases to 0 0.296 grams. So 0 0.296 grams. The way these work is that the zero, so if you heat it, the part that goes away is the water. So you start with something, you heat it, you get 0 0.296 grams of just the nickel sulfate, which we previously called anhydrous, meaning dry, meaning no waters. All right, so now in order to do, right, so our, our favorite thing, my favorite thing is if I have grams of something, turn it into moles always part of the answer, always partial credit, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, which is pretty good. I want to do it for this 0.4 grams, but I don't know x. And if I don't know x, I cannot know what the molar mass is. So don't know molar mass. Colon cannot convert to, to moles. Right. Sad face, because that's what we really wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do anyway. Now, let's figure out what we are going to do. I do have grams and I do have a formula here. So, yes, I'm going to end up converting that to moles. And now I know the whole thing and I know the nickel sulfate. So I can find my water by subtraction. Or waters of hydration. Hydration mass by subtraction. And that means 0 0.400 grams of the whole thing minus 0 0.296 grams of the nickel sulfate part, nickel 2 sulfate, equals the difference is just the mass of all these waters. And we still don't know x. 
0.4, there we go, minus 0.296, I get 0 0.104 grams of H2O. And it's just water, we don't know what X is, um, and that's what we're going to try and find out. X is a whole number, I guess it could be half, that was the other thing it could be. Now, now I have mass, now I have mass, I can figure out the molar mass. So I take my 0 0.296 grams, I get out my periodic table, so I have a nickel, 58.69, I have a sulfur, plus 32.07, and I have four oxygens, which is going to be 64. I get 154.76 grams of nickel sulfate per one mole. And this is an empirical formula problem because I'm going to get moles of one thing. I'm going to get moles of my other thing. And then to find x, we're going to have to divide by the smallest number of moles and see if a whole number ratio pops out. That's where we're going. 18.02 uh, grams of water. I have to say, I have committed that number to memory since I've used it so much. Oop, let's do both of these. 0.296 divided by 154.76. I get a small number, let's see, yep, uh, 0 0.00191. For numbers that are not that many zeros, I like to put it into decimal notation. Scientific notation is fine too. 0 0.104 divided by 18.02, 0 0.00577. And that's moles of H2O. Here we have moles of nickel 2 sulfate. Well, this one is a smaller number. Let's divide both by 0 0.00191. And nothing up my sleeve. It's not magic, it's chemistry. Oh, this one, <laughs> it's not even math for this one. That's just one. Or it is math, but math that I like. 0 0.00577 divided by 0 0.00191, 3.02. That means that there's three H2Os, three waters, for every nickel sulfate. And since X is the number of waters for every nickel 2 sulfate, x equals 3. And I shouldn't put x equals 3.02, I should put x equals 3, box it up as my final answer for this problem. This one is the same type of thing. It's asking, well, it's got the wording a little differently, but you're solving for x. It says, how many molecules of water occur per formula unit of magnesium sulfate. And then it says write the complete formula of the hydrate and state the complete name. Please do do that in your lecture notes so that I can see it. But it, this is just another way, and this is not a way I would use on the homework, but this is just another way of saying what is X. Because X is the molecules of water per formula unit of magnesium sulfate.